residents have spent four days now without any safe drinking water. Heavy rainfall and record flooding earlier in the week exacerbated long-standing problems at the city's aging water treatment plant. And solving those problems, according to city and state leaders, could cost more than a billion dollars. But even more crucial than the money required to repair Jackson's water system is the time that it will take. Reliable and safe water service in Jackson could still be days away. So that's more mornings without being able to get up and brush your teeth in the sink and more nights without being able to flush the toilet inside of your own American home. Now, there are some signs that there is a little bit of progress in the process of getting at least some running water out of faucets again, but the city's water plant still isn't operating at its full capacity, so the folks in Jackson still can't trust that the water that is coming out of those faucets is safe to use or to even drink. As such, residents of Mississippi's mostly black capital city still have to endure hour-long waits at water distribution centers just to get enough water to do things most of us take for granted every single day. We're also learning that the consequences of the water crisis go far beyond just affecting home life. The Jackson Medical Mall low water pressure caused the entire air conditioning system to shut down. The dialysis unit at that medical facility is now running off of a tanker brought in Tuesday to ensure patients are able to get the medical treatment that they need. City, state, and federal leaders have come together in response to the ongoing crisis with emergency declarations at each level of government with the purpose of providing additional aid and resources to the residents of Jackson, Mississippi, and enabling local leaders there to better finance a fix. But the mayor of Jackson, who says he's been warning everybody about the potential of a water catastrophe for New Year years now, going on deaf ears, he says he wants to ensure the state of Mississippi keeps its commitment. It certainly has been the accumulation of challenges and divestment over years, more than three decades. When I moved here in 1988, I remember in 89 when we had these challenges. And so we're happy to have the state on board. We've been going it alone for far too long and to have them now at the, uh, to join us is something that we, open, we, we welcome with open arms. We've been ringing the alarm uh, for an extremely long time. Uh, and we have to make certain that even when the cameras disappear, that the attention doesn't, and that the resolve to make this happen does not go away either. Joining me now, Mississippi State Senator Hillman Frazier. He served in the Mississippi legislature since 1980. So first of all, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Help us understand the latest on the ground there in Jackson, Mississippi. Well, on the ground, we're focusing on getting the plant up and running again because folks have been without uh, safe and running water for much uh, too long, uh, for over 30 days. We have more water notice in the city of Jackson. So our main focus right now is to get the plant up and running so folks can have access to clean, portable water in the city of Jackson. How far away are you from getting that pump up and running? Well, we did install one pump uh, earlier this week. Uh, so. We'll do have, we do have some pressure right now, but in terms of long-term plan, it's gonna take uh, additional time to uh, get the pump, get the plant up and running where it should be. It might take an additional 120 days to uh, get the pump to the, to the condition where folks will be comfortable uh, drinking the water. So we're working very hard to make sure that we get the pump up and running, get it properly staffed, and also uh, repair some of those areas that have uh, been pointed out to us by EPA. In terms of that 120 days, I mean, that's a really, really long time. That's a lot of days without being able to trust the water coming out of the faucet. It just throws you completely off um, of your entire schedule, everything you you know can rely upon in your, your normal day um, just to function as a human thrown off by this. So that's a long time for folks. How are they supposed to trust that even in 120 days, the water coming out of the faucet is safe? What are, what are the local leaders going to do to send that message to the community that, okay, now is the time you are safely able to drink that water? Well, I'm happy to say that all parties are working very closely together. Uh, in addition to uh, the state officials and local officials, you also have uh, local officials working very hard to 
address those concerns. Are the folks going to be very happy to know that we are working together to address those concerns? They see what's going on right now. But they see they are receiving running water right now, so that is a step in the right direction, mm -hmm. uh, properly running water. But our real focus is to make sure that in addition to having running water, you have safe and clean drinking water so folks can brush their teeth, uh, cook with it, wash their dishes with it. So that's our main focus. But once they see us working together and uh, drinking the water ourselves, they will feel uh, better that we are making steps in the right direction. But that is the one step that we should take because long-term problems are going to take additional resources that we're, that we're going to have to work on. In terms of the fact, uh, we, we were talking about this topic, obviously, at the top of our show uh, yesterday. And one of the things that we pointed out and I have been learning is that this isn't a new problem. This is something that has gone on for many, many, many years. You've served in Jackson for 42 years. Speak to how long this has been an issue and how long leaders haven't solved it. This has been a problem for many, many years. Uh, in addition to... Um, the water problem, we have a, a flooding problem. We've been trying to address the flooding problem that we're experiencing right now many years, but it's, it's come down to a battle between urban legislators and rural legislators. Because traditionally speaking, uh, those urban legislators think we're trying to uh, average the water back down to the areas. So they've been able to put together a very strong coalition to block anything to help us address the flooding issue in the city of Jackson. But like I said, uh, I feel good that we are working together. We're talking to each other. We're trying to get support from uh, also the federal government. So if you have the federal, the state, and the locals working together, we can address uh, the problem and solve it the way we couldn't do it in the past. In terms of who you blame, if anyone, you know, who's on your list uh, of folks that you hold responsible for the, the crisis as it stands right now? And who's on your list of people you're looking to to solve it uh, in the way that you just laid out? We're looking at going forward because many mistakes have been made in the past, and we're not responsible for all those mistakes that were made in the past. Our problem is to correct those mistakes by working together to address those problems. Everyone is entitled to clean and safe drinking water. We have to make sure that they have that because that's their public right. We have to make sure that officials are working together to give, give them that. This is Mississippi's capital city. It impacts people all over the state. So we have to make sure that we work together to make sure that we have a capital city that's safe, safe drinking water that folks can be proud of and feel comfortable doing business here. State Senator Hillman Frazier, thank you so much for being here and starting us off today. Please stay safe and keep us updated on the progress on the ground. This is a really horrifying situation, but hopefully it will be quickly resolved. Thank you again. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.